Yo YouTube, welcome back to Scholar Reacts. Today we have 13 lies you were told about space. Be honest, I can't even really like think about one without getting like too like in a whole big umbrella about things, but let's see what they're talking about. When you think of ringed planets, well, you probably assume there's only one of them in our solar system, Saturn. But what if I told you that there are three other planets similar to Saturn? Yeah, it's true. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have their own sets of rings. Oh, really? Most people don't know about them because they're much thinner and pretty much invisible from Earth. We only learned about them when Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 flew past them in the 1970s and 80s. Some scientists even... It's so crazy, even back then, like the 1970s and 80s and one, the technology we had to send satellites that deep into space is crazy. Like me born in the 90s, like, like 70s, 60s, 80s, all that just seemed like ancient time. Even think that Earth had... Technically, it's not even that long ago, too. ...rings at some point in its existence. Four and a half billion years ago, when a planet the size of Mars smashed into our young rock, it ejected so much debris that it likely, briefly, formed a small ring around Earth. Despite their unimaginably massive gravitational pull, black holes don't go around sucking in everything in their way. It just doesn't work like that. Black holes are more like sinkholes. If you were to get too close to one, you'd get spaghettified and lost to the blackness of this monstrosity. But if you're far enough away from it, you'd be safe. Even if I were so- I all thought like black hole was like a vacuum, like it sucks everything around it. Interesting. The sun was replaced in the middle of our solar system by a black hole with similar mass. All the planets would just orbit like nothing happened. Things would get pretty dark though. Now, speaking of. I have to find a video about black holes because I want to know what happens when you get sucked into a black hole. I am super curious. Darkness. The moon doesn't have a dark side. Our planetary partner gets hit by the sunlight all around. The reason why you don't see the other side of the moon is because it's always facing away from us. Hey, how? It just it showed the moon right here, half lit. How is it always lit? What? Yeah, our moon rotates on its axis at the same rate it orbits Earth, making it what's called tidally locked to our planet. If a large asteroid is on a deadly collision course with Earth, the best thing to do is to nuke it. The first movie that came to mind is Armageddon. If you haven't seen it, check it out. Yeah. It's a really good movie. Oh, sorry, wait. I've actually got that wrong. Do not nuke asteroids that are about to collide with us. The reason why... I'm gonna just guess. It's gonna create a million other debris that cause way more damage. Why? Well, because the nuclear explosion will shatter the asteroid into millions of smaller pieces. Yeah, the pieces that would still be headed for impact with us. Instead of dealing with just one giant asteroid, we'd have to deal with multiple impacts. And it would make our evacuation really difficult, or straight up impossible. Now, you still can use a nuke to prevent an asteroid collision, but you don't even have to strike the space rock. We just set off a nuke near the asteroid. Emphasis on near. Then, the force from the blast would nudge it off course, and that would keep our planet safe. Hopefully. In theory, it you makes know, sense. You know, nuking the asteroid off course isn't the only good thing you can do for our planet. Sometimes it's simpler than that, like making sure our air and water are clean. Unfortunately, just the other week, the Supreme Court cut back the Environmental Protection Agency's authority to regulate water pollution, and that's bad news. Over the past 50 years, the EPA reduced six of the most common air pollutants by 78% and significantly Damn. improved air quality. 
Their work has saved countless ecosystems, and restricting the EPA's ability to control water and air pollution is going to have serious consequences in the future. But you know what? Together, we can put people ahead of corporate profits and protect our environment. Speak sure. out, vote, and make sure your representatives know how vital the EPA's work is to you. We only have one chance on this planet. Screw it Standing up. on Earth at night, you can see thousands of stars, but the view from the moon is actually quite boring. Yeah, this is this is one thing I was talking about. Everything comes in space. Everything we see like a photo from space, you never see stars in the background. I yeah, always, like, astronauts who traveled to the moon reported that stars aren't easily visible from there. Because our moon is super reflective, it really cranks up the brightness, making it harder to see out to the stars. It's kind of like stargazing in a city with a lot of light pollution. Not fun. Makes you need to travel further into space to get some better views. Traveling in space won't make you taller. Though it's true that astronauts can grow up to five centimeters in space, well, that's because the Earth's gravity doesn't weigh them down and the vertebrae in their spines are able to expand a bit. But this effect is only temporary. As soon as you return to Earth, you get back to your regular height. Yeah, thanks, gravity. And space travel doesn't make you age slower either. Not really. Albert Einstein theorized that time would pass slower for someone traveling at high speeds versus for someone stationary. This is called time dilation. And while it's true, you'd have to travel incredibly fast to achieve this de-aging effect. Yeah. Like almost Super. speed of light fast. Yeah, with our current space traveling technology, the difference no in time is so minimal that it, it's not even worth calculating. If you thought crying in space was impossible, well, first, why? And second, you're wrong. It's just different. <laughs> Without gravity to pull your tears down, they don't trickle down your face like they do here on Earth. The tears just stick to your eyes and form a sort of watery blob. They might even cover your eyes if you cry a lot. So while you can totally cry in space, it's probably best that you don't. Not great for visibility. Hey, Martian dust storms are a real headache. The dust particles are so fine that they can get anywhere. And these dust storms can last for months, but they can't physically damage any equipment that we leave on the red planet. The thing is, is that the Martian atmosphere is super thin, just about 1% of the atmosphere we have on Earth. So. Even when these dust particles zoom around at about 100 kilometers per hour, they can't pack a big punch without the help of air. But what they can do is cover our solar panels and put our rovers into power-saving hibernation. Oh, and I wouldn't inhale this dust either. Who knows what this fine powder could do to your lungs long term. Radiation, maybe. Twinkle, twinkle, little star, how I wonder what you are. Up above the world so high, this song is a big fat lie. Yeah, despite the famous children's song, 